far out we're heading? Uh, about 25 k's, I reckon. 25 k's, a good day for it. And Beautiful. Is, is it reef? Is it what have we got there? Uh, there's a little bit of natural bottom. Yep. So uh, we'll have a sound around and see how many schools we can pick up. There should be some uh, some good fish around. That's for sure. It's a, it's a good time of the year. For Even them. in winter. Yeah. St Vincent's Golf uh, generally all year round. This thing, mate. It's dynamite. I'll mow that down. A bit different, isn't it? Yeah, it's good colour, similar colour to the leather jackets that are hanging around out here. Yep. And if that doesn't work, I reckon that is one of the coolest lures. Tell me that's not a slow mackerel. Yeah, that's identical. Perfect size, perfect colours. That'll oh. be great. If you notice that small bit of black tape on the sounder screen, that is so you can't see the GPS mark. I think it's very cruel, but these boys said we're not sharing. Yep. Oh, well done, mate. As soon as at the bottom. No, it wasn't, wasn't on the bottom at this stage. Yeah, I don't think he's too bad. There's a bit of weight there. So that actually took it on the... Yep, on yeah, the drop. on the way down. Oh, this one too. As it was going down, mate. Perfect fishing. Oh, just dropped it. Drop it straight back you down. Drop straight back in. His mates should grab it. <laughs> That's the theory. And a lot of people would think that light gear is not good enough to stop a snapper, but if you take your time, it's pretty cool, eh? That's right. Yeah, this is this is ideal. Lightweight gear, it's easy to use, easy to hold. It's amazing the amount of power that the rods these days can come out with something you'd use for garfish 10, 15 yeah. years ago, but... And you'd wonder if you're going to stop them. <laughs> <laughs> Might be hooked in the chin, I think. He's a solid fish, though. Oh, he's hooked in the peck. Yeah. Nice fish, fish though. though. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Mate, I might just grab him by the tail, eh? Yeah. Look at that. You've actually just... He's gone to eat it, obviously. Yeah, yep. And then you've just lifted at the right time and gone bang. No wonder he hit so hard. Ah, now I've got a grip. Oh! Next time you're at the news agents in South Australia and you're going to get your SA Angler magazine, pick up my new book, Fish Handling Skills 101 by Paul Worsling. It is an amazing one. Oh, and there is your beautiful snapper, mate. Well done. Nice fish. It is a nice fish, isn't it? Good school size fish. Now, you call it a school size fish in Melbourne. That'd be one you'd almost ride home about. <laughs> no, they're, they're pretty common around these waters at this time. They are common in these waters, but you never ever see this fish and think that's common. You always get very, very excited. Well done, mate. Technique wise, it's actually very simple what we're doing. It's letting our lure sink all the way to the bottom. When it hits the bottom, just give it a little lift lift. And what that is doing is just getting that plastic to swim up off the bottom and then swim back down. If there's a school of fish down there, it might be a couple of metres deep. So if you can get it to come up into the school and swim back through them, because the fish know if they don't eat it, someone else is going to eat it, they have to hit it. They just have to. It's that reaction bite. That's what we're looking for. These fish are pretty touchy at the moment. The tide's about to change, so I think they've sort of shut down from eating at the moment. They're not too interested. There are a couple of little taps that we're getting. I think they're probably a little bit of aggression, just sort of not, not actually feeding. So just a bit of persistence and casting around until you get one that bites it properly. You there? Eight metres under the water. So you hit that eight metres below the boat? About eight metres down, yeah. That is unbelievable. And who would think you could throw a bit of rubber like that into the water and as it's swimming to the bottom, a fish comes along and eats it? Yeah, they're pretty active at the moment. We've seen them up on the surface lately, so they're definitely feeding through through the entire water column, which is uh, why it pays to cast around a bit. 
thing you remember about this snapper fishery, we could have 2,000 fish under us, and there's probably 20 of those we really want to catch. That's there's right. probably 100 we'd love to catch, and then there could be like 1,800 from this big to this big. So it really is a numbers game, isn't it? You've got to catch a lot of fish to get That's those right. big ones. And is there certain times of the tide or stage of the day when you get the big ones? Big ones are, are pretty common around sunset and sunrise. Yep. But you will get them during the day as well. He's a solid fish, mate. Yeah, That's he's a, a good nice fish. fish. I'll grab the net. Beautiful fish. Slide him up. Beautiful. That is one big net. You need to get a big snapper to make him look big in that net, mate. Right. Just right. grab that fish. I'll get the net for you. And that is a solid snapper. It's not a monster by SA standards, but how's the, the thickness of it, the girth? That's a great fish. Perfect table size fish. It is, and that fish there is probably about 60 centimetres, and believe it or not, at 60 centimetres, that snapper would probably be about eight years of age. That's right, yeah. They, they're a pretty slow growing fish, and you know, those 20 pound fish are up around the 25 to 35 years old, so. Just crazy. In fact, the oldest snapper ever recorded in Australia, caught in Western Australia in 2007, 40 years, 10 months of age, it was 93.5 centimetres long. So I've decided to drop down in size to a 110 mil squidgy whip bait in the drop bear pattern. Just pays to try and utilise a few different weights and jig heads. I've uh, started off with three quarters of an ounce but was getting to the bottom pretty easily so I've just dropped back a touch. If the breeze or the tide picks up you can increase your weights just to make sure that you're touching the bottom and if you're getting there a little bit easy as I'm doing just drop your weights a little bit. Pretty simple, keep it simple and you'll be right. Going pretty hard? Going very hard. Well done, mate. Bit of patience involved. <laughs> a little bit of patience. Yeah. <laughs> you might not be able to tell, but we're doing it a little bit tough today. When I say we're doing a little bit tough, we're catching fish, but how hard are we working to find them, mate? Yeah, very hard. We're doing a lot of a lot of ground covering and a lot of casting and retrieving. and They're there, but they're just not flying up, aren't they? That's right, yeah. I'm just going to drop this plastic back into the school yep. on the off chance there's still a few around. This fish went pretty hard to start with. It did go very hard. Just downsized the lure as well from a, about a 14 centimetre lure down to about a 10 just to see if that did anything. It's worked so far, so. Well, what you got to do when things are not working, you just got to try different things. That's right. Here's the fish now. Oh, that's a nice fish, mate. Yeah, he's a nice, nice oh, fish. Beautiful dark fish too. Yeah, he's quite dark at the moment. Well done. Now that is a better size snapper. Beautiful fish. Nice colours too. And of course we can only theorise because fish can't talk. Do you reckon going to the smaller plastic made a difference? Yeah, it has to have because we've been trying quite hard with the bigger one. So that was about the first or second drop with the smaller one that seemed to work. So I think I might put a smaller plastic on. And this is what fishing is all about. You learn as you go. You can't ask the fish. It's all about theories. Smaller plastic and it's worked. And apparently these fish are feeding on small leather jackets. Yeah, little leather jackets. So I guess that resembles something similar. Good work. I'll tell you what it does resemble. It resembles a very nice feed. This guy is coming to the local Thai restaurant and I'm very excited about that. The waves and the tide have all increased, so on Shane's recommendation, we've actually anchored up. It'll make it a little bit easier for us. We just couldn't get to the bottom, we were just moving too fast. Now that it's sitting stationary, Brett and I are just going to cast like a fan, cover plenty of ground, and our jigs actually get to the bottom, which is where the fish are. Another nice little snapper here. Not doing too much, but. No, it's a flatty. Beautiful. One of the best table fish in the ocean, I think. Lovely little southern blue spot.
These are just some of the squidges we've been using today in different colours and styles. But one thing you must remember is this stuff here called S-Factor. Put it on your squidgies. At worst, it masks human odour. At best, it makes the fish just hang onto your plastic that a little bit longer, which gives you time to set the hook. Oh, it's amazing when you get a patch. They're all over your plastic. I reckon I had about six bites in a row then and literally just dropped every fish after fish went back and bang the head again. Now, this snapper is what they'd call in South Australia a rugger. In Victoria, we'd call it a pinky. And New South Wales, they'd probably call it a squire. And all that means is it's a fish under 50 centimetres. But on this sort of gear, chuck and plastics, they're a lot of fun, particularly when they're in numbers. And they're hungry. There he is. Oh, aren't they sensational looking beasts? Come here, mate. Now that is small for South Australian standards, I'll give you the tip. But if you look at that as a fish, the average person would be so happy to come out and catch it. And even though that fish is probably only about 45 centimetres long, it's probably spawned many times in its life. In fact, a snapper will start spawning at around 24 centimetres fork length. That's from the nose just to that bit there. And the reason we set our state regulations is that every fish gets the chance to breed at least once before you possibly put it on the table. You are one very lucky snapper. Okay, I just saw a snapper. Oh, there's this snapper jumping at the front of the boat. Let him on! That is incredible! I just saw Snapper free jumping, drop the plastic down, get into him, mate! And I've hooked one. That is one of the most incredible things I've ever, ever seen. Can you believe this? That's awesome. <laughs> and the wind is making it so hard to fish. There's the second one. The wind is making it so hard to fish. And my cameraman actually said, what's that splashing around? We went over, Rick, you're a star, because straight away, snap everywhere. And sometimes things just got to go your way, don't they, mate? That's right. Been persistent. Plenty of wind around now. And they decided to bob up in front of us. Wow. So why did the snapper come to the surface here? They push a lot of bait fish up. We've noticed a lot of small leather jackets and some pilchards and little slimies. They've been sort of showering around out here lately. So they definitely move up and down the water column, feeding and chasing bait fish. An incredible thing is too, you've got to understand, fish don't feed all the time. They only feed when they're hungry or fired up. Let's not cross lines here, mate. The one's just out the back And here. the thing about these fish, they were so fired up, wouldn't matter where you cast, they would have eaten it. They were just on the job. So not the size fish you'd normally expect off the surface, that one? No, you, you tend to find a lot of sort of five kilo plus fish when they hit the surface here, but well, this I, one's... I saw five kilo plus fish. I saw their big red tails flapping about, but this is something new for me. I've never ever caught surface snapper. <laughs> no, it's a, we're pretty lucky to have had it recently. Unbelievable. Well there done, mate. It's a beautiful fish. And there is my beautiful fish. How awesome was that? Squidgy flick bait, fluoro, snapper on the surface. I've caught thousands of snapper, but that has got to be one of the coolest to see them and then cast to them. How good was that, mate? Awesome. It's not, not too many days you get to go out and sight fish snapper on the top. That was just incredible to see him, to cast a catch.